know how fast the Mac is when you open it for the first time? And then it starts to slow down and overfill and so on. That's not true. These are just advertisements trying to push you by their software, by their cleaning programs, malware protections and so on. You don't need any of that on your Mac. Yes, that's true that the Mac overfill with stuff you don't need over the time. But it's nothing. We can't manage ourselves. And that's exactly what this video is about. There are a lot of categories to optimize. There are a lot of settings to change. And there are a lot of places to clean on the Mac. This will be a fairly long video. That's why I'm including timestamps under the video so you can jump ahead to the category you need. But I recommend you to watch it all from the beginning. Because some things I do now in the beginning might influence some other things later in the video where we will go deeper in the system settings, click caches and check the library. So let's do it and shave some files from the storage. Let's start from the simple things to see how much storage is used on your Mac. Just open system settings, then click general in the sidebar and you will see it right on top. Just give it some time to load the colorful bar. Here each color represents different category of files. Usually it will be documents and apps taking the most of the storage. But sometimes you will see that system storage is a lot more than it should be. In general, system should be around 20 GB of storage. So something between 20 or 30 GB is fine. But if you see more in this category, then this is the right video for you. Let's optimize the storage now by changing few settings and deleting large files we don't need. I will go through these categories and delete unnecessary things and also change some default settings in Finder itself and also in few different apps. As I said, this will be a long video, so if you find my explanation too long or boring, you can skip ahead. For your convenience, I'm actually including in the description the full list in details of what kind of forces we'll be visiting, what things we'll be doing and settings we are changing, so you can find exactly what you need. But I believe this whole video will not be a waste of time, so you can stick with me for a few minutes. But now let's explore the categories and start removing some unneeded files. If you want to explore the category, just click on the info icon. And here I can for example see all my apps sorted by size. I can simply select the app and click on the delete button to remove it. For example, one of the largest applications are video editing softwares. I have here Final Cut Pro and also iMovie. I do all the editing in Final Cut, so I can simply delete iMovie and save around 3GB of space. Maybe you will find here other apps you don't use and with one click you can simply delete them. Next category, Documents. Same story here. Click on the info icon and see the files sorted by size or last open date. I can see video files I have not opened for more than a year and they are taking gigabytes of space for nothing. If you recognize the file, you can delete it right away. You can also show it in Finder or simply press spacebar on your keyboard to preview the file with quick look. You can also switch to file browser to view the contents and amount of storage used by various folders in your file system. I can see that pictures take quite a lot of space. I can review these files. I can see a lot of files are in downloads as well. Maybe there are some things sitting there which I don't need anymore, like movies I have already watched. So this is a nice overview and it makes it easy to find large files you can remove from your Mac. You can also search for these files manually. So open find a window and start a new search. You can just type any letter and that will take you to this searching window. You don't need to search for any file name, so just delete what you have typed. And now click on this plus button and instead of the name, select other and look for file size. I can filter files larger than 100 megabytes, for example. 
it is not so nicely separated in categories like it was in system settings, but it's actually showing a lot more files in here. For example, this FIFA series. Let's review that. I can select any file, press Command R to open it in hand closing folder in Finder, and now if I press and hold Option key on my keyboard, it will reveal the file path. I can see it's actually on iCloud, but it's still downloaded on the local storage and taking space for nothing. So right click it and remove download. I can also use the path to go one step back and remove the download of a whole folder. In the search it actually shows the location if you have the path bar activated, which can be done from the view menu if you don't have it. And even in here you can switch to list view, add the size column if you right click it here and sort it by size. Now you can simply review your files and delete things you don't need. But back to system settings. Next, what we have here is iCloud Drive. It doesn't really give many options here. The only thing you can manage here is to store your desktop and documents files and the messages with their attachments on the iCloud. It's one of the recommendations up here, but I don't really use it. In general, it doesn't save you much space and it's messing with your own files. I have another recommendations regarding iCloud Drive, which I will show you later in this video. Next is Mail category, which contains emails and their attachments. All you need to do to keep this category low is to manage your own emails and delete conversations you don't need anymore. Mail app always downloads media attachments that you receive, such as images, PDFs, video or audio files, and place it into a special folder in your home library. But you can forbid these automatic downloads if you go to Mail, open the settings, and on the Accounts tab, click the pop-up menu Download Attachments. Here, select None. You can set it differently for each of your accounts, and you can decide what attachments should be downloaded manually. Similar things can be found in Messages app as well. But if I open it, I can really see the attachments here and I can simply delete it from system settings. But as extra, I can also set the attachments to be deleted automatically. In order to do that, we have to open the Messages app. Click on the settings and in this drop down menu, you can set to keep saved messages forever or for a year or just as short as one month. I recommend setting it to one year or delete the attachments manually from system settings. Music creation, that's just content from GarageBand, Logic and Mainstage apps. If you don't use these apps, delete it. You can always download all of these apps again from the App Store. And last category are photos. It's of course not all the images you have on the Mac, just the photo library from Synchronized Photos app. So let's open the app as well, because if you don't have it set correctly, it can take a lot of your storage on the Mac. I have around 70 GB of photos on my iPhone, and if it fully syncs with the Mac, I will immediately lose these 70 GB of the Mac storage as well. So we better check it out. Open up Photo Settings, and on General tab, this select Copy Items to Photo Library. And on the Cloud tab, make sure that Optimize Mac Storage is selected. It means that the app will be showing only previews of your photos and download the full resolution photos only when you need them. Now we went through the categories, but we are not done here. There are other apps we need to check. First of them is Apple Music. Make sure that this option in Music Settings is not selected because otherwise every song you add to your library will be automatically downloaded. It's useful if you don't always have internet connection, so you could play your songs offline. But if you don't need it, there is no point of downloading the whole music library on your Mac and occupying a lot of your storage. Another recommendation is to delete watched movies from Apple TV. We can open the settings for Apple TV, switch to the Files tab, and tick on this option. Automatically delete watched movies and TV shows. 
We are almost done. But one more space which can accumulate files is the bin itself. Luckily, we can set it to automatically erase items that have been there for more than 30 days. To do that, click on the desktop, open find the settings and on the advanced tab, you will find this option. So tick it on. You will still get 30 days if you want to recover any files and you don't need to be emptying the bin manually. Now a few words about the last item here, the system data. This category primarily includes files and data used by the system, such as log files, caches, and other system resources, also including temporary files, fonts, app support files, and plugins. Apple doesn't recommend touching these system files, but we can definitely do a few things about it. The system will never go to zero. You will most likely not even get under 25 gigabytes. But if you see here something like 100, we can definitely reduce that and do something about it. So let's move on to the last part of this video, where we will clean up some things from the system library. You can get to this library in various ways, but the easiest is to use the Go menu. So click on the desktop, open the Go menu and press the option key on your keyboard to reveal the library. There is also one more trick to have the library shown here all the time. In order to do that, go to your home folder and right click the empty space and select show view options. Here you can tick on show library folder. Now it will be visible in the go menu all the time. First and obvious thing we can do in here is to clear caches. This is fairly new Mac, so these folders will not be so overfilled. But if you are using your Mac for a long time, you might find a lot of useless files here, taking gigabytes of your storage for nothing. In general, you can delete everything in this folder and it should not influence functionality of any app. But if you look at it closely, most of these files will be really small. Caches are there to actually speed things up. So unless it takes a lot of space, or it is an app you have already deleted, you don't need to bother with these small files so much. One of the largest folders from these will be your browser caches. But you can delete these caches from the browsers itself. You don't need to be diving in system library. So I will now show you how to do it on Safari and on Google Chrome. And then we'll come back to the library and visit some other folders from where we can delete files without any problems. So on Safari, you need to first go to the settings and on the last tab, which is called advanced, select show develop menu in the menu bar. Now here on top, we have a new menu and somewhere in the middle is empty caches command. From now on, emptying browser caches on Safari will be done with one click. On Google Chrome, we also need to go to the settings. Select privacy and security on the left and here we have option to clear browsing data. Under that, you will find browsing history, cookies and caches. Make sure to select the time range as well for the period you need and go ahead and clear the data. Now back to the library. I want to look into more folders. One of them is application support. This folder is mostly filled up with temporary files, just supporting the good functionality of your applications. These could be, for example, logging settings, old backups, voice recordings, and so on. Again, these files can be deleted without any harm. While deleting these files, I have one general advice. If you are not so sure about the files you want to delete, just move them first temporarily. You can put them on the desktop and first check out if everything works fine. If you don't see any problems, you can delete these files later. But if there is any issue, you have the backup on the desktop and you can always move them back. Now let's first find out if there are any large files. Switch to list view and sort it by size. But as you can see, by default, Mac is not calculating folder sizes. I don't really know why, but let's quickly fix that. Press command J to open viewing options and tick on calculate all sizes. Now we can sort even the folders by size and see what's taking up a lot of space. 
Right on top, I have my recording app, so I can freely delete content of it. If you are using Adobe software, you should check that folder as well. There is usually a lot of data which can be deleted. You may also see mobile sync folder here. In that folder, you should find some old backups of your other iOS devices. I don't back up my iPhone on the Mac, so it's empty here. Again, if it's just few kilobytes, you don't need to worry about it. Leaving these files will definitely not be slowing down your Mac. We are just trying to save some space here. So find only the large files and delete that. Don't worry about these other things around. At the end, I want to show you two more locations in the library. By the fact, there are folders which takes usually the most of the storage. And there is not much we can do about it. These are mobile documents and containers. Containers is a home folder for all the apps downloaded from the Mac App Store. This folder contains support files, cached files and other temporary files which are necessary for these apps. I repeat necessary. So don't delete any content of these folders. Even if the containers folder takes up a lot of disk space, just don't delete it. Instead, you can try to reinstall affected apps and reduce its size this way. The second folder, which is really large, is called Mobile Documents. I can sort the whole library by size, and in my case, it will really end up on top. Unfortunately, there is not much I can do about it either. This is the actual location of the iCloud folder. So documents, applications, preference files, iOS app data and more synchronized data are all stored in this folder. You should not move, rename or delete any of these files. If you are using iCloud, this folder might take a lot of your storage on the Mac. So the only way how you can reduce it its size is to actually go to iCloud and remove some files from there. But if you look at it closely, it's not so bad how it looks. Let me show you. Select the folder, open info using the shortcut command I and look at the size. It shows something over 13 gigabytes. But in the brackets, you will find out that it's occupying a lot less on the local disk. Unfortunately, iCloud is deciding itself which data will be synced and what will be removed from the storage. You can't really do anything about it. There is actually one more thing connected to it, which you can do. We are done in the library, so let's close it and go to your iCloud folder in Finder. I use iCloud as a storage of files I currently don't need on my disk, but it's files which I might need in the future, so I don't want to remove them completely. Good example are movies or large documents. The thing is that when you move the file from the Mac to the iCloud, it will actually just change the location and upload it to iCloud. But it will still take space on your Mac. Until you start running out of space or you don't touch these files for a long time, then iCloud might finally decide to free the disk from it. You can luckily speed it up and manually manage these files. Just go through your iCloud folder and look for the cloud symbol. That means the file is on your iCloud. And anytime you find a file without this cloud, you can right click it and select remove download. That will remove the file from your local disk and keep it only on iCloud. When you are really running low on storage, macOS also clears caches and logs automatically. It also delete temporary database files, other interrupted downloads, updates, Safari website and so much more. But it's better to clean it up regularly. You don't need to be filling up the storage to the last gigabyte. It's actually recommended to keep around 10% of your disk free. There are other parts of the system and other components which are using the storage. I hope that this video really helped you clear out some of the space. You can tell me in the comments below what was occupying the space on your Mac. Or maybe some of your other suggestions what other locations could be visited and cleaned. And if you have cleaned up at least one gigabyte of storage, you can give this video a little love and leave a like here. I would really appreciate it and it would help sharing this video to more people and this way helping more people. So thank you for watching and I hope to see you in the next video.